with new technologies, choice of software, methods, articles, best practices, books, and other never-ending subjects added to our professional design world every day. Are we as designers expected to learn to code as well? That's been a controversial debate for years now. Some think that we must absolutely be able to code and others think the complete opposite. For me, however, I'm more in the middle of a road with this one as I think that it really depends on individual's circumstances. In this video, I'm going to give my thoughts about this topic and as usual, all the timestamps are down below. Let's start with a question of should designers learn to code? The short answer is nope. Most design jobs don't expect you to code necessarily. They expect you to well, design. However, the long answer is maybe. Our world of UI design, UX design, or whatever that you want to call it, is fairly new and vast. Even in the company that you work for, or even in the industry that you work within, the definition of a designer might be different to another company or industry. To give you an example, I've worked at startups where I did design all the way to front-end development, worked at companies where I did end-to-end -end design work, as in UX research all the way to interaction and UI design. I've also worked at companies where even UI and UX designers were separate. So for example, I wasn't even allowed to touch UX research or wireframes and they just wanted me to do UI work. So instead of asking whether I should learn to code or not, maybe a better approach is to figure out what kind of a company you want to work for and what kind of an industry you want to work for and learn the specific traits for that job and that industry. If you're just starting out in design, learning all of these new things like UI design, Figma, Adobe Suite, UX strategy, user research, design thinking, building a portfolio, learning how to present, and much more can be quite overwhelming. My advice is to focus on the core of your profession first, and once you're comfortable in one area, then start branching out into other fields like coding or 3D modeling or illustration or whatever else that you want to focus on. Your career path should influence the focus of the things that you learn in design. For example, if you aspire to be a UX researcher, it makes more sense to focus on other things like user testing, facilitating workshops, audits, and other things that will benefit you in that specific design field. But if you're planning on specializing in UI design, UI interactions, or design systems, then learning to code can help you out greatly. The last thing that I would like to touch on and probably the most important thing is your own personal interest. So for example, for me, I've personally always been interested to learn how to build what I actually design. So the journey of coding and learning to code has always been a very interesting one for me. For you, you might not care about coding at all and maybe something like illustration or user research might be something that you're more interested in. And that is completely okay. You can still be a successful designer doing what you love as long as you're really, really good at it and as long as you put all of your focus into that trait. And at the end of the day, that would just make us good for specific and different roles. And we just have to find a role that would suit our skill sets the best. Learning the absolute basics of how to code, and I'm just talking about the absolute basic concepts over here, can be beneficial to all designers from all different backgrounds with different expertise. Other than the benefits like being able to communicate better with developers and estimating better for specific deadlines and specific projects, the most important and useful ability that it provides for you is to make better design decisions based on different circumstances. Think of it as an architect design in a building, or a construction and the relationship between them, the project and the engineers and the project managers and everybody else involved. The ability to be able to design a building that once built can actually withstand the different conditions and to be able to communicate that with their engineers and to be able to stay within a deadline and a budget can be extremely useful to an architect. And in the same way, the same concept sort of applies to our jobs as well. All right, I want to quickly showcase how a simple design decision can affect the development phase greatly. 
I've quickly made these two obviously incredible and groundbreaking designs over here to provide an example of how having basic knowledge of code can help you make better design decisions. Give or take, these two designs look really, really similar. I've made some design choices with the one on the left to keep things quite simple and stacked. You could argue that it provides a cleaner look. And the one on the right, I made the choice to make the layout a bit more interesting and break things out of their typical grid. I then went ahead and built both of these in HTML and CSS. For those of you that don't know, these are the main languages to build layouts for the web. So we have the simple layout, layout number one on the left hand side, and we've got the more complex layout on the right hand side. The idea here isn't for you to understand this code or what is going on. I just want to showcase that by making these simple design changes. In our HTML, we went from 25 lines of code to 31 lines of code. And within our CSS, we went from 70 lines of code to 99 lines of code. And the final results, this is the more simple layout and this is the more complex layout coded on the browser. Now, by all means, this isn't much in this context, but imagine if you made design decisions throughout the design phase that could potentially prolong the development phase by quite a bit. And that's when we start creeping away from the scope and our deadlines, if we're not careful. I'm not saying that we should always take the simple design route. What I'm trying to say is that by understanding the foundations of how things are built, we can make the right design decision at the right time based on the circumstances of the project. All right, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching this video. Your support means the world to me. Um, really, really appreciate it. If you've enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe as all of those actions will help me out greatly. If you have any questions, just comment down below and I'll see you guys in the next one.